Hello everyone and you're all very warm welcome to this PMDG Boeing 737 for Microsoft Flight Simulator tutorial. I'm Emmanuel, I'm a real-life Boeing 737 pilot and a member of the PMDG tech team. In today's video I'm going to show you the final CDU pre-flight procedure, which is the procedure we do when we get the final loading information from the dispatcher and when we do the takeoff performance calculation. Now I did a previous video about this using the tool Topcat, however user Clemens kindly pointed me to a much better tool that has recently become available and that is Virtual Performance Tool. You can see it up here currently as of the time of recording of this video on the 26th of April 2022. This tool is still in a beta state. However, while it is in beta, it is available for you to check out for free. So head over to virtualperformancetool.com to have a look at that. And a small disclaimer here. Yes, I did get a free license from the guys at Virtual Performance Tool to feature the tool in my video. However, that was based on my initiative. I contacted them and asked them if I could get a license to use it in my videos. And the reason for that is purely because it is an amazing tool. This tool looks exactly like what we're using at work and it is doing a very, very good job. There is a small limitation at the moment. Only the Boeing 737-800 is available in various profiles. I will show you over here. If we select the new aircraft type, you have several. You have the 800, the 800 with winglets and the 800 with winglets and short field performance kit. You can also create user fleets and uh, virtual airline profiles here. So today we are sitting in a 700 here for our tutorial, but we'll have to live with the data of the 800. And I am making this small exception here because it is so much better than the previous performance tools we've had available. In about a month time, maybe a little bit more, we will probably also see the 737-700. I did have a little bit of uh, contact with Sasha, the guy behind the virtual performance tool today, and he told me that it is taking a tremendous amount of time, approximately one month per airframe type. Now you can see how many different types we have over here. So bear with them while they are also creating the 700 for our use in uh, Flight Simulator. So for now we're going to use the 800 with winglets and uh, steel brakes operating under EASA rules. If you're flying for an American company then you probably want to select the FAA rules which are slightly different from the EASA rules. Anyway, let's now proceed on with our FMC um, preparations. So at this point we're assuming that all the loading is done, the fuel required is on board. And if you just click the line select key next to the zero fuel weight, then it's going to automatically put in your scratch pad what you currently have loaded in your airplane. We're going to put that in in the zero fuel we weight section, then cross check it against our gross weight. And if the gross weight is within 100 kilos of the data from the weight and balance page on the performance tool, then we can execute it and use this data. If there is a bigger difference, we have to establish the reason why. Now, I'm not going to show you that quite yet since the weight and balance information is for a 737-800 while we only have a 700 available here. However, I will make a separate video covering the details of the virtual performance tool and where I'm going to show you exactly what data you can put in and how we do that in real life. For now we have confirmed our gross weight data in here and now we are going to calculate our performance tool. We have already selected the 737-800 with winglets. Our departure airport is going to be London Stansted, runway 22. Now we can pick our intersection. Quickly going to show you this um, on the Navigraph charts. Again these are Jefferson charts currently provided to the flight sim community by Navigraph. Let's have a quick look over here as to which intersection might be making sense. Parked over here on the apron Bravo. So we've got intersection Quebec, Papa, and then of course the full length from Romeo and Sierra. Now I'd say anything beyond Quebec doesn't make a lot of sense for our departure since we wouldn't be taxiing along the runway. 
We'll however take it back just in case the intersections Romeo and Sierra are congested over here. So continuing on with the performance tool then. Romeo 22, intersection Quebec. The runway is dry. We are using the default um, scattered clouds weather theme for this. So let's just have a quick look here into the weather data. It's providing us a wind that's variable with two knots. So for the OPT we are simply going to type minus two. That's going to give us a two knot of tailwind. Temperature in this scenario is uh, 15 degrees and the altimeter setting 1013. We're going to use optimum rating, so it's going to determine the fixed D rate based on the optimum performance available. I've already set my virtual performance tool to a fixed flap of 5. You can select optimum, however in my company it's standard to always use flaps 5 since it provides some additional tail clearance. Now in my company we mainly fly the 737-800 that you can see used here in the virtual performance tool as well. And with the 800 there is something to consider, that's the tail clearance on rotation. And basically when you're using flaps 1 you only have 30 centimeters between the tail and the runway by the point where the aircraft lift, uh, lifts off. With flaps 5 you have some additional 20 centimeters to give you a total of 50 centimeters of tail clearance and we are taking this additional safety margin. And for fleet commonality we are doing the same on our Boeing 737-700 aircraft. Air condition auto, anti-ice is off, improved climb is set to off as well. For more details as to what that is I will refer you to the separate video I'm going to do about the virtual performance tool at a later point. Something to consider here, if you were to use anti-ice, you have both settings, anti uh, engine anti-ice or engine and wing anti-ice. Now, on the ground in the 737 Next Generation and also in the MAX aircraft, you are always going to switch on the engine and wing anti-ice unless the aircraft has been de-iced. If the airplane has been de-iced, you are going to use only the engine anti-ice, but if the airplane has not been de-iced, you will always use engine and wing anti-ice. However, the wing anti-ice is going to pop off once you are setting takeoff thrust. So that could lead some of you to believe only to use the engine rating here. However, that's not true. The choice between engine or engine and wing is made based on the requirement what you're going to use after takeoff. So if you anticipate no severe wing anti-icing to occur, you're going to use only the engine setting. If you do expect wing and uh, wing icing to occur, then you're going to select engine and wing. For our purpose we have 15 degrees so we don't need any anti-ice so we're going to leave this off. Now we are going to enter our takeoff weight here. If you did the weight and balance computation that would have been automatically filled. However, since we're flying a 700 we didn't do that. So takeoff weight's 56.1. We're taking this right from the gross weight. Click and calculate. Now it's giving us a takeoff run available of 2687 meters, a minimum flap retraction altitude 1348 feet, and we're going to use a 22k rating with 60 degrees of assumed temperature. There are a couple of reasons why you would not be using assumed temperature. For example, when you have anti skid or thrust reverses in operative or with the engine electronic controls in alternate mode, whenever the runway is contaminated, and most importantly when the crosswind exceeds 10 knots. So with 10 knots or more crosswind you're not going to use assumed temperature. In that case you would simply select the full rating. However today we only have 2 knots of wind so we can use assumed temperature. So we're heading to the N1 limit page. We're going to select a 22k rating with a 60 degrees of assumed temperature. That gives us an N1 of 86.8% versus a predicted N1 of 86.1%. The reason why there's a difference is because we do currently not have the bleed air system powered since we're still running on the external power unit. That makes the 737 computer internally to assume that you're running a bleeds off configuration in which case you have some more N1 available. The difference between the N1 with the bleeds off and the computed N1 that's based on the bleeds being on is depending on the 
fixed D-rate and assumed temperature you're using in the region of about 0.6 to 0.8 percent N1. Therefore, 86.8 versus 86.1, that's totally within the acceptable uh, range of a difference. And once we're going to turn on the APU bleed later on, that is also going to change here to be within 0.1 percent of the number calculated by the onboard performance tool. In this, by the way, you can also find your engine failure SID. Remember how I told you earlier that you can find it on the website of Blackbox711? That's true, I can still recommend you to check that out, but this OPT here is also providing you some engine failure information. Alright, with the engine rating checked up here, we are heading on to the takeoff page. We're going to use flaps 5, I've pre-entered that already. In the center of gravity, we just click on the line select key next to it, and it's automatically going to fill whatever you have currently loaded in the airplane. So we're looking at 18.3, inserted over here, it gives us 6.4 units of trim. You would, com you would compare it with the center of gravity from the onboard performance tool. However, again, um, as we are flying a 700 here, and this is based on an 800, we will get some different settings. So 6.4 units of trim, we're going to tune those. And don't be surprised if you don't hear the trim sound at the moment. This is all still recorded on a beta version of the airplane, and the trim sound is something that's still work in progress at the moment. So in the final release version it is going to be there, however at the moment it's not implemented in the current beta. So 6.5 units, 6.4 units, that's close enough. For the takeoff speeds, you're going to compare the speeds from the FMC with those from the onboard performance tool. And if they are within one knot, then you can use the speeds suggested to you by the FMC over here. Now once again for this tutorial, these are based on the 737-800. This is a 737-700 in the simulator that we're flying right now. So we are just going to use the FMC-based speeds. However, if once we get the 700 in the onboard performance tool, if these speeds are within one knot, you can use them. If they are not within one knot, meaning that there's a greater difference, then you always have to use the speeds from the onboard performance tool and not those from the flight management computer. I've got a couple of questions on my channel as to why there might be differences and why we're using an on uh, performance tool at all while the FMC is calculating this. The reason is that the FMC does not know about quite some limiting factors. For example, if we're using an intersection takeoff, or if there are some obstacles behind the runway. The performance tool knows all of these, the FMC does not. And one further reason is that in the performance tool you can also select minimum equipment list restrictions, or you can insert no temps or dispatch deviations. So that's all some stuff that we can uh, do in the OPT that the FMC does not know about, and that's why the OPT values are usually more correct than the FMC predicted values. Right, once the V2 is set, we're also going to set it up on the MCP. 130 knots, and that completes our final CDU pre-flight procedure. I'm going to leave it at this for today's video. Hope to see you again on the next one, where we are finally going to commence our pushback and start our engines. Thank you very much for watching, and see you all on the next one.